Anybody ever wondered if, uh, if going to a Tiesto concert or an Avicii concert is where it's at? Just come to an Orthodox Jewish wedding, and you'll see it's way higher than that. Not even close. What's that? You need a toe box for your construction shoes to dance because your feet get. I need a white toe box. That's what we go with barefoot shoes. Spread the word. Barefoot shoes is the way to go. Okay, we're learning the prophecies of the end of days, which is pretty gishmak. It's pretty amazing stuff. We're learning about literally end of day prophecies of what will happen to Yisrael at the end of days, right before Mashiach comes, and in the unfolding of the Messianic era. And this is all in the context of Shoivim, of Tshuva. And we're discussing how this is the time of year that's very, very powerful time to return to Hashem. And if we've strayed off the path, like they say, gotten off the derech, then this is the time to come back on the derech, come back on the path. Because uh, there's a lot of intriguing influences out there that are trying to pull, pull us, push us both directions to go towards things that are not our highest will. And whenever we get involved in those things, we never feel good about ourselves when we do them. But we still do them anyways. And tshuva means that I stop doing the things that make me disrespect myself. That's tshuva. Such a good line, right? It's like if you can have anything on your screensaver, like the back thing. Tshuva means stopping to do the things that make us disrespect ourselves. That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you feel, I'm proud of who this human being is. It's so ennobling to think that way. I'm feeling tshuva right now. I'm feeling it. And we're describing how Hashem said all the world is going to come back in tshuva. We said Hashem, Kaviochel himself, is going to do tshuva. He's, so to speak, not going to do the things that make him disrespect himself. He's going to do the things that reveal his greatness. He's going to come back onto his throne. And that when we're in exile, Hashem is with us. And that's how we show our loyalty to God, to be close to Him even in the times of exile, when you can't see Him so clearly. But when the Shia comes, Hashem is going to say, Ani Hashem, and the whole world is going to be in awe. But at that point, it's going to be too late to be able to fix things. There'll be able to be some level of small fixing that could still happen, but not like now. Because it's going to be so easy. Free will is going to be systematically taken away. Because when you know exactly what life is all about, you know that Hashem is the master, creator, sustainer of the world, and He loves you. But for all those years and lifetimes, we're talking about reincarnations. If a person rebelled, then it's going to be, at a certain point, not possible. And that's why free will is so important, that free will is in a context of time. Because now you can exercise free will in this space of time. There was no time, there'd be no power to free will. Because why would I want to choose? I, just, I could just go on forever, there's no time. But if that you could choose something in the context of time, that something's going to run out, so your actions are very meaningful, the choices that you make. And we're at the end of the story now, this is the... This is the end of the end. The concluding chapters. The concluding chapters. We're literally at the end of the story. What do you mean? We won't. Mishir is definitely coming. We won't get into a whole shir about it. We have a shir, another shir we gave about the timeline of the world. That this world is six thousand years, and the first few days of creation already correspond to the millions and billions of years that the the archaeologists speak about. Because the first few days of creation, there was no sun as we know it, that only came on day four. And therefore, all those beginning days were not a day like you know it. What's a day before there's a solar day? <coughs> God names a day. Years. Excellent. And therefore, you could have dinosaurs and you could have everything happening in those first few days. 
It's an important thing to know. There's no contradiction between science and the Torah. The more that science delves into the truth of creation, the more scientists are becoming religious people because they see that this world is just dripping with God consciousness. It's screaming out intelligent creation. Screaming intelligent creation. So now at the end of the story, that's why I, this is one of my favorite chapters in the whole Torah, besides the fact that this is my Bar Mitzvah parasha, parasha is Nitzavim, which is right before. I was born a few days before Rosh Hashanah, so this is like, I also feel much like a, very much a Rosh Hashanah Dikhi Yid. The Sfarim say that every single Yid has like their holiday that's like their thing. Really? Yeah, really. There's some Yidin that are like real Pesach Yidin. They're just, there's some Yidin that are like, Parshat Purim, you didn't? I do like Purim a lot. Mitzvah Shem, looking forward to Purim with everybody. But I really feel like a Rosh Hashanah Dikhi Yid. I really, the whole idea of making Hashem the king, Rosh Hashanah is very, very deep to me. Rosh Hashanah. And my Neshama came to the world during, right before Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is very, very dear to me. Rosh Hashanah. Rabbi Nachman's into Rosh Hashanah. This, some people like Hanukkah Yidin, some also Tu Bishvat. I feel very, very close to Tu Bishvat. We're getting ready. We're going to have a big, big party here on Tu Bishvat. Everybody get ready. It's nothing like you've ever seen before. Nothing. Unless you, you know, we're in Sfat in the 1500s. It's up to you. <laughs> Hanging out. Uh, who, who said it has to be? Maybe. Maybe. You know, El Al, you can also extend flights. It's okay. I extended my flight. Like and, I, and I continue to extend. That was 15 years ago. I'm still extending. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. I just got married and had kids in between. But I'm still extending. <laughs> Tu Bishvat is in three weeks, my friends. Three weeks. Get ready for the celebration. I, my Neshama feels very connected to Tu Bishvat. So every year you have to think. Some, I know a year is like a, a Yom Kippur Dikhi Yid. The whole year he's thinking about Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur. There's certain Yidin that are like Tisha B'Av Yidin. There's such a thing. Like very Sukkot. You're born on Tisha B'av? Yeah. Maybe you're Mashiach. It says Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. Oh. Let's go, Rabbi Isai. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. There's such a thing. Now, does it mean it has to be? So there's, there's, there's those that understand when Chazal said he's born on Tisha B'av, there are those that understand that it means that his neshama, so to speak, is revealed on Tisha B'av. So to speak, he's born. What does it mean to be born? It means there's a revelation. Born means you're hidden and now you can see them. Here he is, he's born. So there's an idea of a leida. Leida means when something was hidden and then becomes revealed. There are those that say, no, it means actually born in Tisha B'av. But not conceived. Not conceived. Born. There's a leida on Tisha B'av. It's, it's actually forbidden to have relations on Tisha B'av. In Torah law. Like Yom Kippur. It's such a day of intense tsar, of pain. It's also the day, though, that Mashiach is born, which is very interesting. It's a very deep and powerful, complex day. And we're speaking about these prophecies of the end of days, and we said that Hashem is going to come back. And then it, look what it says. V'shaviki beitzcha mikolo amin. And Hashem is going to bring us back from all the places that we've gone to, and all the sad intermarriage, and all the getting lost in different, different places, and somebody becoming a, you know, God forbid, getting lost somewhere in Papua New Guinea, and getting involved in whatever they do over there, which happens to be associated with eating people, which is not kosher. And other things of idol worship and paganism, Hashem Yirachem. And Baruch Hashem Chabad has gone to bring people back. But we've been on a, we've been scattered. In the 60s, it was a big thing that people would go to India, go to the ashrams. And the problem was, when you got there, the guru said, so, <coughs> passports, please. We're throwing them in the fire. Sign a dotted line. And people lost themselves. They went to very, very far away. There's a story about an IDF soldier going to India. He got 
possessed by a woman. He was, he was going to get married to a woman. He got possessed her with black magic. And then, like, the rabbis go, and he was, like, like not stable or something. And then they basically killed the woman. And, like, some rabbi helped him out. With and that was inside of him. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's spooky stuff that goes on. There's still people that are practicing dark magic in the world. It's not like an ancient thing. The Torah is not an ancient storybook. The Torah is literally vital, alive. They ask Lubavitch Rebbe, do you read the news? He said, of course I do. I read the weekly parasha in the Torah. You want to know what's going on in the news? Just open up the parasha. Literally, the world is being created out of the weekly parasha. The Torah is vital. Vital signs are active. It's very alive, the Torah. So the more Torah you learn, the more alive you become. You become very alive when you learn Torah. And people notice this. That the less, the less Torah they learn, they feel more dead. They feel more zombie-like. The more Torah, the more alive. Because the Torah is called? Eitz Chayim Hi Lamachazikim Ba. The Torah is called a tree of life. Eitz Chayim. But it says Lamachzikim Ba. To those that grab onto it. The Torah is sitting there, but Karen's obvious. The Torah says, anybody want the Keter Torah? You can have a crown. It's called the crown of Torah. It's just sitting in the corner. Itai, you want it? It's sitting in the corner. Just go grab it. Lamach zikimba. You have to want it. Go get it. It's waiting for us. It's Eitz Chaim. And what does the word Eitz mean? A tree. What does the word Eitz also mean? Eitzah. It's advice. It's good advice. It's advice that will bring you life. Advice that will bring you life. If people knew that, they would be running to grab onto it. But where do we think the life is at? Netflix. Cod. Basketball. <laughs> It's a Russia Tavis. Russia Tavis for Call of Duty. It's an acronym. <laughs> Cod. Not fishing. Halavai, people would fish more. It's so wholesome. My great uncle and I used to go out on Lake Simcha. Lake Simco, they call it. One of my rabbinim called it Lake Simcha. It's uh, north of Toronto. And just fish. We went ice fishing also. You know, you know how wholesome it is just to sit with somebody you love and just sit and fish, catch some fish, then go fillet them, fry it up. This is bonding. There was no phones back then. You just schmoozed. You just talked to another human being. When do we have that? And he would tell me about life. Like under, you know, you're outside, fresh air. Who does that anymore? So halavai, you'd be catching some cod as opposed to call of dutying. Which, by the way, a lot of these games are just woven with all sorts of bad ideologies and stuff that I won't mention, like stuff that they sneak into Disney movies, this type of stuff. I mean, they, I don't think they're sneaking it anymore. They're not sneaking it. They're just telling you. Yeah, exactly. Nowadays, they're not even hiding it anymore. They're just telling you. Telling you what? What's going on in the world right now? Let's just say yeah, that. Just telling they're telling you. They're telling you. They're teaching little kids. They're teaching little kids all sorts of not nice things. Exactly. And they're just weaving it into the movies. It's, it's, part of their, it's part of the propaganda, the propaganda machine. So when you're out catching cod and just fishing, it's, not, it's, it's life. It's real. So the Torah is called Eitz Chaim. It's called the tree of life. And by the way, we're called a tree. We'll talk a lot about this on Tubi Shvat. How a man is called a tree. Ha'odam, ki ha'odam eitz ha'sodeh. The man is called a tree. And everything that means, be called a tree. And therefore, if you want to be a tree that's alive, you need to have the Torah. The Torah is eights, which is eight sa, which is good advice. Advice to live life, to live the happiest life possible. And to be chayim, to be, like we mentioned before, life in this world and the world to come. Plural. Plural. Not, we don't just live our life for this world. How did Dave Matthews say? Eat, drink. And be merry, because tomorrow you're going to die. You know what the best marriage advice I got from one of my dear Rebbe's? 
mentors, second best friend. Second best friend because my wife is my best friend. Oh. Rabbi Dovber Cohen. <coughs> Rabbi Dovber said to me before I got married, you, know, you want to know, there's such a thing that you go to a rabbi before you get married to like have him like, you know, pep talk, pump you up. It's called a chas and shmooz. It's separate to knowing all the laws and halachas. There's like, you also get shmoozes with people. They give you like a, a little bit of a pep talk. And we hope that, you know, the ones that give you that pep talk are successful in marriage. So, of course, Rabbi Dov Bear is a great, great tzaddik. And you want to hear the pep talk? This was the chas and shmooz he gave me. He said, Moishala. Moishi. He said, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel tov. You're gonna die. <laughs> Take care of your wife. Because <laughs> this is this is it. You're gonna die in the end. So don't be selfish. Don't lose yourself in stupid things. Excuse my French. Do the right things. Do the things that are going to give you life in this world and the world to come. Because this world is going to end. Just man up to things that need to be done. Because <clears throat> after 120 years, we should all live long lives until... He's going to bring the Yidin home. And he's going to bring humanity home. Back to Hashem. He's going to go to Times Square. Do a whole remake-over of all the... PR, all the marketing over there on the television screens. Everything's going to be about Hashem. Whoever has God.com, he's mamish, set. Hmm. But everyone's going to be set. There's only going to be one thing that people are going to look for on the internet. Hashem, God, nothing else. These are coming, my friends. This is like, you're in it. This is it. This is the final countdown. That Hashem scattered to all the four corners and the farthest, farthest places. And even people think that they could get away from things that they want on SpaceX and they're trying to you know, live on the moon somewhere and they're trying to get away. The Hashem is going to bring everybody back. He's going to grab them by their payas. Even if they shave their head, Hashem will find some little thing. Don't worry. Pull them back. Now look at this line. This line just gives me goosebumps. We're reading from the Torah. Now what happens if a person got so far from Hashem? I mean, how far is far? So far. He, he's so far, he's what's called. He's been pushed away <coughs> literally to Ketzei HaShamayim. Like the end of the heavens. Like he's run away from God. He's run away from everything. He's in the darkest, darkest places. He's so far. He's like hanging on to the edge of the universe. He's, he's all but like on the edge of the spaceship, you know, like, and you have like that umbilical cord thing. It's like he's like out there. And then if God forbid the umbilical thing, the, he's, like, he's like holding on. Spiritually. It's sad. Sometimes you see a person, you look in their eyes, they're so dark. Like, he's gotten very, very far away. Sadly, sometimes a lot of uh, drugs does this to a person. They just get far, get far away. What, what does it the most? Averot. Doing, I don't like this word. It's not such a nice, it's not such a Jewish word. Sins. We don't really have, we don't even have a word for sin in the Hebrew language. But it means that he got so far off the derech. And he's just dark. And lost. He's drinking. Alcoholics are very far. That type of stuff, like far. And his worst, his life is in shambles. And he's literally just hanging on. To, to by a thread. By a thread. Hanging on by a thread. The edge of the heavens. Like the universe, he's about to leave existence. He's about to leave the universe. Lo aleinu chas v'shalom rachmanu l'tzan. Let's just say he's a long way from Eishat Tayr. A 
And look at these words. I'm, I'm like tearing up. Misham yikabetzcha Hashem. From there Hashem will also bring him in. Hashem will find him. He'll bring him home from that place. If you can imagine anybody that you know in your life that's gone so far, so far, like, like, from that place Hashem will bring him. Hashem will bring him all the way, all the way in. He'll bring you. Yikachecha is also singular. Who's going to take you? He won't leave you. Which means there's always hope. No matter how far somebody feels like they've gone. Hashem, at the end of days, everyone's going to come home. This is, this is Shuvu Banim Shoivavim. This is the time of major Tshuva. We're in the first week. There's six of these weeks. And we're just going to, as every week goes on, you'll notice the intensity of these Shi'urim is going to get more intense. It's going to get like very intense because the energy of Shavim is going to intensify as the weeks get more and more. Yes, my friend. What happens to at the end of time? So everybody's going to have a tikkun. Even there, we said yesterday, the Shav Hashem is is Amoin, uh, is Mitzrayim. But the prophets say that all of the nations are going to have a tikkun. And anybody from the nations of the world that were righteous, we call righteous Gentiles, they will have a portion of the world to come. The Gentiles, anybody who is a righteous Gentile and was close to God, and they have seven mitzvahs called the Sheva Mitzvot B'nai Noach, the seven Noahide laws, if they follow those laws, which the first one is believing in God, knowing that there's a creator, also not murdering, not stealing. So the Trinity, yeah, tri- the Trinity, for they technically do idol worship. If you think about, idol worship. you think so, about that, because uh, Yoshka, he just so so if the, the if somebody makes a human being into God, number one, it's just irrational, because how does an infinite being become finite? They're mutually exclusive. That's why you can't point and say, this is God. What, this is opposed to something else? So that is making idols. We can't do that. The Trinity is more complex, though. It's that there's a unity of God. We go to a higher level of consciousness where we don't speak about the Trinity. We speak about God as one, completely one. About Ein Oid Malvado. That Hashem Echad, everything is made of the Hashem stuff, God energy, God consciousness. But we never point to something and say, this is God. That's why you'll notice in the Torah, in, in any synagogue, in any, when you come into the world of the Jewish people, there's no idols, nothing. Any formation of things, it's very, there's nothing. Everything is just go right to God. That's why our whole service is very... Talk to God. It's all about direct relationship with God. Direct relationship with God. Yes. Um, well, apparently, like, like I heard there was a prophet saying that when Moshiach comes, there's a way to repent. Like the Goyim want to do like repentance of being one of, a, of becoming a Jew. They want to become Jews. And the first thing they do is build a Sukkot and stay over. But, but, but like no one, I don't think they'll build it, but they're not going to want to stay inside. So, so yeah, that, that, the Gemara says that at the end of days, Everybody's going to come to Hashem. We said, Shav Hashem. Even Hashem is going to come back onto His throne. And He's going to say, whoever did the mitzvahs, whoever was loyal to me, come and receive your reward. And everybody's going to come. They're going to say, we're loyal to you. We'll talk about this maybe next time. And Hashem's going to say, you weren't loyal. And He brings certain proofs of why they weren't loyal. And then Hashem says, I'll give you one more chance. I'll give you one mitzvah, which is easy. And it gives them the mitzvah of sukkah. Come and sit in a sukkah. Come and, who doesn't love sitting in a sukkah? Geshmak. Sukkah Jews, right? We said you guys are sukkah. Come sit in the sukkah. 
And by the way, Sukkot is, is the holiday of the nations of the world. That's why we bring the Shivan Parim. That's why many, many non-Jews come to Israel in the time of Sukkot in order to party with God. It's a very, very special time for the whole world because the temple belongs to all of humanity. The whole of humanity will get to be here. So Shem says, here's one mitzvah, sukkah. And then you know what happens? God takes the sun from the sheath. He's moitze achamim in artika. He takes the sun out of its protective barrier. And it starts getting hot. And you know what happens when it gets hot in the sukkah? It starts getting a bit, you know, toasty. So it says those that were loyal to God, they want to stay in the sukkah. They don't want to leave the sukkah. It's so nice. Who doesn't love the sukkah? Even though we know mitzvah put them in a sukkah, if it gets too uncomfortable, then you're put them from the sukkah. Many of the tzaddikim said on this, mitzvah, you're actually getting uncomfortable in the sukkah, you're put them from the sukkah. When I sit in my Rebbe's sukkah, but well, just because it's a little bit cold, or it rains a little bit, you don't have to get out of the sukkah. But somebody gets so uptight, it's, a little, it's too hot in here. Just leave the sukkah. So it gets hot. By the way, during sukkahs, you don't want to leave your sukkah for anything. Because the oramakif, the, the spiritual light that's coming into your consciousness at that moment is, is crazy. You want to leave that for seven days? So Shem makes it very hot in the end of days. And those that were not loyal to God, what do you think they do? They walk out of the sukkah. They don't just walk out of the sukkah. You know what they do? They, they kick it, they, they, they destroy it. says they kick the sukkah and they walk out. So Shem says, oh, but it got a little bit hard for you. You're still not loyal to me. It's not even a hard mitzvah. It got a little bit hot and uncomfortable. You kick the sukkah. I see what you were made of the whole time. You were never loyal to me. Mitzvah means connection. Our whole life is about making that connection. How do we do it? We have the best advice. It's called Eitz Chaim. Called the Torah. We should be Zoycha Mamish. To listen to the Eitz of the Torah. To listen to the Eitz Chaim. Lamach Zikim. But to grab on to the Torah. Be Zoycha the Mashiach Tzidkeinu. And Binyin Beis HaMikdash. Be Meher Amen. Shabbat Shalom. A good Shabbos. Rabbi Yisai. Kol Tov.